gon' do, house nigga. So here I go. The movie starts with these two women hauling around a big ass TV in the buggy. One of them is Cheryl Underwood from The View. Damn, she was ratchet as fuck right here. Sitting there looking like Wesley when he did two on food. They arrived at Black and Blue Shopping Center. And I swear, this shit like a ghetto Sanford and Son or some shit. <laughs> We get introduced to Blue. He the funny nigga in here, or comic relief. And I don't care what movie this nigga in, us in the black community will always know this nigga as Ezel. R.P. A.J. Johnson, though. Oh, and the thing I like about this movie is they got a 90s all-star cast. Look at Mia X. So we cut back to the ghetto twins, and they talking shit to Blue about this ragged-ass TV he sold them. Hey, this nigga wild, though. Listen to what he call him. Yes, up here, you flying monkey bitches. Now this is Black, who's played by none other than Master P. He's the opposite of Blue. Of course, he's the serious businessman or whatever. He overhears Blue them arguing and decide to remind Blue of business. Blue, mad business, dog. This man, can't you see I'm trying to run a business around here, dog? Yeah, I would have been fired this nigga a long time ago doing shit like this. Hey, fuck the four pumps. Just give me two pumps in a garage. Oh. So after an unknowing delivery man gets lost and asks for help, I'm looking for the 9,000 building. Black takes notice and proceeds to say this. And it's in a gold mine in the ghetto. Now pause. Black, how the hell you know what's on this van? Why would you even say that? Who you looking for? Mr. Goldstein. That's me, baby. I'm Mr. Goldstein. Now wait, nigga, how you even heard this nigga? Weren't you way over there somewhere? No, I'm sorry. Listen, uh, look. Just, uh, just sign this. I'm sorry I got lost. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. uh, if my boss found out. What the fuck are you doing, man? Oh, is that, is that me? I'm telling y'all, blue is bad for business. So they get these boxes and they just so conveniently happen to be a bunch of cell phones. I still can't tell y'all how this nigga knew that these was gonna be cell phones in the box. So the ladies finally make it to Blue's uncle shop after dragging this TV round all day. I don't know if this movie take place in New Orleans or LA. And I'ma tell you why I say that a little later. So Aunt turns out to be none other than the legendary John Witherspoon, who gonna be forever to black people as pops or granddad if you're a 90s baby. So Pops Jock and Miss Underwood here, and they proceed to go in the back. I guess Pops fix her a plate. Bessie, what you eating? Keep eating some butter cookies. And my girl grabbed this old ass musket, and I guess she finna go get some straightening with black and blue. We then get to my favorite scene of the movie. Let's just take a second to admire how this motherfucker starts. This is for the This nigga Blue even walk up funny. Uh, now Black sits down beside Lil Brother, and that's because he has the hook up on some cell phone chips or some shit. Yeah, it's the nines, y'all. Bear with me. Now y'all just listen to these niggas' conversation. I wish he jacked me, Coon. He gonna be a dead or wacky motherfucker that the government don't have to give another hey, check. Wait, 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 man. Wait, 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 man. Feel about a cow, motherfucker. Man, don't you play like that. <laughs> And look, did y'all ever notice this pic of Barrett? I swear I seen this movie a thousand times and it's the first time I ever noticed that picture. Damn, that's crazy. So after this interruption, a woman enters the church and gets everybody's attention. And we soon find out why. Why everybody turning around? It's that old bitch, Miss Rose. She swore this Barrowhead ever died before she did. She spit this coffee. Barrowhead, you big-headed son of a bitch! <laughs> We get some horrible ADR or voiceover right here. It always stood out to me. Flakes. I bet he was like that commercial, huh? What commercial? Got milk. <laughs> <laughs> Black then calls his love interest. Damn, this bitch ain't just got one nigga, but she got two. Damn, P, why the fuck you going out like that? So the next day, Black meets up with the freak, I meant Lorraine, to have lunch. And I ain't gonna cap, shout out to cute and all, but Black still tripping. So he then asked her about hooking the phones up because she works at a cell phone company. After this, they start selling phones. Uh, things going kind of good, uh. Motherfucking Tootsie Pop. Lola, you know how those niggas are when they get out of jail? Who's the first person they call? Tootsie Pop. The first person they call. Tootsie Pop. 
Just a bop, baby. They want some jailhouse oh. with that. <laughs> Sometimes in this movie, we have random scenes that are just for comedy's sake. This being the example. No, nigga, I ain't got shit for you. I need some money, mama girl. Come yeah. on. I licked your wrinkled ass pussy for two dollars. I got water from the last time I let you have two, 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 two dollars. Oh, shit, I was doing you a well, favor. Well, fuck you. We then go to the cell phone company and her boss is letting her department know that he knows some illegal shit is going on. There's a surge in the unauthorized traffic on the south side. But I'll tell you one thing, people. I intend to get to the bottom of it. This nigga look like a lizard with them big goof ass glasses. Cut back to these niggas and they acting like they so tired. <gasps> we, we, we need some help. I'm tired, dog, but we gotta, we gotta span this business some kind of way. They then discuss hiring more people, I guess, and Blue gets his cousin, Fat Ass, to start working for him. You gave your thousand dollars, what, two what days ago? What's the matter with you? I had to get my hair fixed and then my nails. Shit, you want me to style, don't you? Shit, baby. <laughs> Thank you, my ass. You pay me that back when you get your check. Listen, I raised you now. Don't come talking back to me. Now, I'll whip your buns. Little sweet thing. Bye now. Be cool. Lizard Man is now going undercover, and I'm assuming acting cool or something. Do you know black and blue? I mean, they own this, this place. Now here we see the first signs of trouble with the phones, with this funny exchange right here. I want $40 worth of smoke. Who? Phones all fucked up. What? You got any reason? Who is this? Who the hell you think I am? What the fuck you? Well, fuck you too. So fat ass on the corner slinging phones like he's selling dope. Suddenly a car pulls up and it's none other than Debo. Damn, this nigga P got about the whole cast of Friday in this bitch. Be a top of line. Look at the cheap stuff you been selling on the street. Is, is, is your money good? You gonna slap yourself for asking that question. Slap yourself. <laughs> Mr. Tina. Harder. Uh, uh, Harder. Now get my phone. We get back to Blue and this nigga being bad at business as usual. See man, look at this shit. Old girl in the back stealing. Who working security around this bitch? Later we get to the park and this is when the plot thickens as they say. Everybody chilling, having a good time. Then these niggas show up with this goddamn music. What the hell? Y'all see this smoke? Where the hell is it coming from? The fuck these niggas in the WWE? I fuck with Mr. Canal, but nigga, you telling me this shit was cool in the 90s. <laughs> so the boss, aka Roscoe, calls Debo's phone, and because of the signal, he cusses him out because he don't know who it is. What was on this phone I'm talking to is a bitch. <laughs> Shit. The radio and cell phone signal get mixed up somehow, and Roscoe ends up telling everybody where he got money stashed, like $70,000. Fat ass called Blue and give him the rundown. This nigga acting like this is his first movie and shit. We probably set up the biggest treasure hunt since the gold rush, man. Someone eventually finds the money. Wait, like damn man, you ain't gonna try to stop these niggas? Where's your gun? Do something nigga, you Debo. Blue come through and tell Black that they gotta go lay low. The cell phone, the 70 grand? Power 106 played it on the radio. Everybody heard it. Um, de -wop de -de -de -boom. Now it's the next morning and they leave Lorraine's spot and these niggas literally slap box for hours. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> So back at the flea market, old boy finally finds it, but of course black and blue ain't nowhere in sight, and Debo and gang robbed me a X. Now we back to the lizard, and he comes across Tootsie Pop, who gives him information on the phones and also seduces him. Lorraine gets fired, and now she too is on the hunt for black and blue. Fat ass end up getting busted by these two cops, and while on the way they get a call, and it's about one of their houses, so they go to check. This scene always felt weird to me, like it didn't fit with the tone of the rest of the movie up until this point. After this, Lorraine finally arrives at Aunt Lil Freak Bar. And get this, tries to confront Black about him being around other hoes. It's all good, baby. What you tripping on? What you tripping on? I know you're trying to hide something back there. I don't have nothing to hide. Yeah, right. What you... Yeah. Black, you motherfucking liar. Girl, you was the same nigga that you, you know what? Let me shut up. Hey, 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 h
Cut that bitch off! Black and blue, we suspect that they are the master criminals behind all this. Turn around, turn around, stay to the top, let's go. Right. Y'all always fucking with a nigga. D-Boy and his gang finally catch up with Black and Blue, and these niggas battle a lot. Ah! You not scared of me? I'm t late, right. boo. Come on, come on, what's happening? Say what you gonna do. Oh, nigga, you was preparing for that shit. So now we in the interrogation room, and the movie takes an even weirder turn. Now y'all, what the fuck is going on here? I mean, these niggas' voices completely changed. Not only that, notice the white makeup on the black actor's skin. Fat ass's parents eventually come to bail him out. This jail got spotlights and shit. What the hell? Find you down to the liquor fire. I'm not scared of him. Bitch, I'm crazy. Your mama. Meanwhile, Black and Blue link up with Ice Cube to buy a car. You fat Ice Cube looking motherfucker. Black then enters Roscoe's spot to I guess talk some business with him. You got some kind of fucking nerve to show up in my club. You must got all my money. Damn, I wonder what Roscoe look like. She get tense when Debo enter, but Roscoe tell them to fall back. After this, Black and Blue end up getting in a high speed chase with the Fed officers. The hood fly up and blue stunt double get out the closet. After shaking the feds, they fuck around and hit little brother. And y'all see, this is what I meant earlier. This shit is clearly California in the background. This do not look like New Orleans. They end up in the sewer and find these niggas. Man, what the hell y'all doing in the sewer with these dogs? What the hell is even going on right now? What the hell is even that? Hey, man, you think they gonna find us in here, man? They'll never find us down here, dog. Now these niggas just conveniently happen to be standing right there. <laughs> So Debo and his boys take black and blue to this construction yard where they got this wood chipper. Tell me where that black box is, I'm gonna put your ass to sleep. Well, we ain't sleeping. Man, shut up. Things get funky when Debo steps off to use the porta potty. Stupid. You watch. I gotta go take a shit. Wondering, like, since you gonna kill us, can we get high first? Got a blunt in my pocket, man. Wanna know if we can smoke it. But apparently, it ain't no weed. He, he need to leave that dope alone. Fuck up. The black, the black cop, the black. Uh, Yo, who the fuck is that, man? Uh, uh, I don't know about y'all, but little brother getting on my fucking nerves with all this moaning and groaning shit. So they finally remember to go back to the shopping center where the feds are waiting on. Them. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck? Now this nigga snapped back to normal. So now it seems all is well. Lorraine comes to see Black, and I guess this nigga really gonna settle down with this bitch. Oh well, hoes need love too, I guess. Well, that's the end. Blue! Blue! You know virgin. I'ma make you respect me and my sister, Blue. Get your target. Go ahead, shoot me. No, cause you got that from my uncle. <laughs> I know it don't work. Shoot me in my ass. You motherfucker! Ah, this bitch done shot me in my ass! Oh! Damn, girl, how long you been dragging that fucking TV cross time? It took you this long to find these niggas? <laughs> now, I got the hookup is by no means a great film, but I do enjoy it for nostalgic reasons. I mean, this one of the movies that I personally grew up watching, like Minister Society or Juice or some shit. We had potential with the cast. I mean, this nigga P damn near had the whole cast of Friday, minus Chris Tucker and Neil Long, but I felt it was underutilized by this whack ass story. Now, y'all heard me mention ADR, which is automated dialogue replacement, and this usually occurs when sound is bad on set 
or if they want to add lines in later. That shit was very much overused in here. Made me want to say, uh. I'm assuming Master P being the hustler that he is was pushing to make the release date and get the film in the theater so that he could hurry up and cash in. Blue was funny as hell. I mean, I feel like if we subtract Blue, then this movie would be extra ass. Shout out to Blue for being the heart of the film. And shout out to Master P for not using no narration at the beginning or throughout. Some of the funny scenes haven't aged well, however, I feel that there's still enough funny scenes to carry the film. If y'all can't tell, I really ain't rock with Lorraine. I just feel like she was no good. P coulda did better, I don't care what y'all say. We coulda did without the whole black FBI dudes pretending to be white guys. I mean, I just ain't understand that shit. Oh, and please don't cast this nigga little brother and I got the hook up three. Matter of fact, I seen two. And you know, just don't make three at all. Now y'all know how I grade. On a scale of five poop emojis, I'm gonna give this one three, which means bullshit but good shit. Just for the love of God, don't watch I Got the Hook Up too. And if you like the content, leave a comment down in the comment box. Please give me a like and smash that subscribe button. I'm gonna be bringing you more content. Tell a friend to tell a friend to watch feel more cinema. And don't forget to check out my movie Joyland 2019, which is available on Tubi, YouTube, Prime, Pluto TV, Ruko TV and Apple TV. Thank y'all for rocking with me and catch me on the next one. Bye now. Be cool.